Aye aye, shepherd's pie. Greetings from the Philippines. I'm in a garden in the early hours. Um, contemplating life. And I've come out of the garden to uh, escape the uh, echo of the kitchen. Um, spoiler alert, I'm sure there'll be roosters. It's uh, just approaching 1 a.m. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, some of us join us for uh, some of them join us for a dawn chorus at some stage because uh, that's what they do: roosters roost and sing and basically drive you nuts. But it is what it is. It's the Philippines. So anyway, I thought I'd make a cheeky little video tonight about something that's been um, playing on my mind for quite a while now. Um, I think it's difficult as an expat not to let shit like this bother you. Um, but when I say bother you, I mean it's something I think you need to give serious thought to. If you don't, in my book, you're an idiot. Um, but don't let it get you down. You know, uh, you might not believe it if you watch this, uh, my channel. I'm actually quite optimistic, you know. There's an expression I like, there are no problems, there are challenges. Which is probably quite surprising given I am a very lazy man. But what I'm getting at is, um, you know, if there are problems in my life, if there are challenges that appear in front of me, what I tend to do is get very down when I first find out about it, overreact. But within a few hours, I've convinced myself it's not going to be as bad as uh, I thought it was, usually. And by the next day, you know, I'm embracing it, thinking, you know, it was meant to be. These things are sent to test you kind of thing, and I'm happy it's happened. But that's the way I've been most of my life. Um, not saying that's the way you should be. Not saying that at all. I'm just saying it's the way I am. Uh, and always have been. So when I say these things are... Um, things bother me, I think about them and generally turn them around to, uh, you know, well, it's a good thing. Um, not always, can't always do it, but that's the way I tend to uh, approach things. So where am I going with this? Right. In a roundabout way, I'm talking about the future or the potential future for me or you, if you're considering being an expat. Because one piece of advice I'll give to anyone who is thinking about becoming an expat is never make solid plans. You've got to be flexible in this lifestyle. That's why, and I am not digging anyone out for a second, I will often get comments in I mean, what I'm getting at is this is why I have never bought property in a foreign country, never bought land, never built anything, and I have no intention of doing so. Certainly not for a long, long time to come. But I will always get comments from people saying, you should do this, you should build this, I've made money out of this, I've bought houses, i sold that, etc, etc. Well, power to you. You know, it's, I am very happy that, that has worked out for you so far. And I don't say so far in a condescending way at all, because it may carry on working out for you, you know, and I genuinely hope it does. But for me, it is not a risk I am gonna take anytime soon or in the foreseeable future. Because I look at expat life, clearly I look at expat life differently to the way you do. Now who's right and who's wrong? Only time will tell. Um, hopefully we're both right. But uh, I just wonder sometimes, and again I know I said I'm not digging anyone out, but when someone make, when people make comments like I've done this and I've done that, I often wonder if they're seeking validation. Because, um, you know, why do you need to tell people what you've done? But anyway, we're going down a different route, a different route this, this anyway, I'll, I'll shut up now, that's not, that, that's, that's not where I wanted to go with this. Uh, that doesn't sound nice at all. 
<laughs> Maybe I'm not a nice bloke. <laughs> I have had a couple of rum and cokes, which is why I'm making a video. So I've no doubt I'll get a couple of digs about being an alcoholic and that will, you know, whatever floats your boat. Um, so anyway, what I'm getting at is the reason I've never done any investments in foreign countries and have no intentions of doing so is because you never know what's going to happen next down the road. It's impossible to know because when you're in foreign countries as an expat, you have no vote. I can't vote in the Philippines. I couldn't vote in Thailand. Unless you naturalise and become a citizen, you can't vote in a country. So you're vulnerable, and you always will be vulnerable. And laws can change just like that. The government of the country, there can be an election, there can be a coup. I was in Thailand for, for you know, the first, the coup, well not the first coup, they've had loads of it, the 2014 coup, the day I arrived there was a coup. Um, it can happen at any time. Governments can change. And you can get a populist government comes in and their whole regime could be based around kicking the expats out, seizing the property back. You won't have a damn say in it. You know, it's, um, it, it, it's just the reality of life. But if you want to take that risk, power to you. As I've said in previous videos, I've got a good friend over there in uh, City Hall, Paul, you know, for the beach bums. He invested fairly heavily in Bitcoin. It's doing very well for him at the moment. And I genuinely hope it contends, you know, continues to. But not for me. That, that's not a risk I'm going to take. You know, I am quite liberal in my uh, lifestyle. But quite conservative when it comes to investments and things like that. You know, I, I'm not a risk taker. I'm not a gambler. Though I like, you know, my stocks and shares portfolios. Nothing impressive, but... You know, they're all like, you know, they're all passive investments. Um, you know, I just want a long time return. I'm, I'm not interested in get rich, you know, uh, schemes and all the rest of it. Because I don't want to lose anything. I'd rather have a slow gain, um, and a small gain, and a fast gain than a fast loss. But anyway, we digress. The cows are off now. So anyway, what I'm getting at with this video is... Uh, now I'm going to get a lot of facts wrong now, but what got me thinking on this train of thought was a number of things happened in Thailand in terms of the coup and various other bits and pieces, but they changed the law in Malaysia as I understand it a few years back. Can't remember how many years ago, might have been four years ago, might have been five years ago, could be longer, could be sooner, it's irrelevant really. And I know I haven't got the facts right. I'm not a research guy, I never will be, you know. As I say in my uh, YouTube channel, keep it raw, keep it honest. You know, that's what I do. I don't I don't edit unless I really have to, and I don't do research. It's unedited raw opinions. This is my opinion. So I've probably butchered a few of the facts here. If I have, sorry, but it's just the way this channel is. Malaysia um, banned a, uh, well, they changed the law. They basically encouraged, I'm making up the figures here, but they said to Western expats or people from other countries, foreign investors, you can buy a house for £200,000, for example. You can have an income of £25,000 a year. You can come, you can get a long stay visa, come build your house, buy your house, you can stay here for your lifetime. Then a couple of years in this programme, they suddenly said, right, you know, to keep on the programme, the 25 grand is not enough. So you've got to have 60 grand, for example. And a lot of uh, people who'd bought houses and that suddenly couldn't meet the requirements to stay there. And had to leave. Um, now, I've probably got some of the facts there wrong, but stuff like that plays on your mind. When you've seen that, you start to think, well, wait a minute, that could happen to me. What would I do if that was a situation? And that, on top of coups and various other bits and bobs, is part of the reasons why I've never built anything or invested in anything. Because you never know what's around the corner. It's not just the wife or the, you know, the family who can take your house and things. You know, countries can go to war, economies can collapse, all sorts of things can happen. You can have a say, keep saying coup, all sorts of things can happen. And you don't have a vote in these countries. You're not going to be able to go to elections if there are elections. So you're always going to be on the bottom of the pile as far as um, 
the powers that be are. You know, obviously they're interested in big conglomerate investments. They're not interested in me and you. They'll quite happily upset me and you for a headline or, you know, to win an election. Um, and you know, that's just the way the world works. But the way I look at it in my home country, the UK, it's not a perfect place. It's not a perfect place. But if they change the laws to screw me and my property there, they would be screwing a lot of people. And we've all got the vote. And why is democracy? You think, well, you're safer in your home country because you've got the vote and you can cause, you know, together, collective bargaining, you, you, you can do something. You have none of that in foreign countries. You know, none of that when you're living as an expat. So that's why I don't invest. Um, now, I do wonder, point sent me tonight when I'm making this video, because I think things through. Um, I'm wondering if that's one of the reasons I came to the Philippines. Because I've always had it in my head when I was in Thailand. Don't plan ahead too far, because you don't know how long you can stay. They might change the law, they might do this. You know, you might not have enough money to meet the criteria, etc. Because I always thought the reason I'd come to the Philippines is I'd woken up one day in Thailand and I'd said, like, you know, thought to myself, let's try somewhere else. You're happy here. You've had a good seven plus years here. You like Cambodia, but where else have you been? You weren't happy with Thailand when you first came, because I wasn't. I never thought I'd end up in Thailand. Never thought that would happen. I went there for a holiday. I'd done a bit of traveling around the world. It was the last destination I went to. Didn't expect to like it. Went there, fell in love with a place. Next thing you know, I'd moved there, you know, uh, and that was it. You know, Thailand was the place for me. And may well still be the place for me because I love it in Thailand. But it got me thinking, well, you fell in love with Thailand. Maybe you'll fall in love with the Philippines. Maybe you'll fall in love with uh, Colombia or whatever. So, I decided to try it. And the Philippines was the first place I came to. But as I'm making this video, I'm wondering if there was an element of, you know, your subconscious saying, look what they're doing with the laws in Thailand. Look what they're trying to achieve. Because for Thailand, for a number of years now, they've been pushing for what they call, uh, what's the expression they use? High-class tourists. They want people who've got more money to come over. They're talking about raising the hotels from three stars to five stars. They've seen what's happening in other countries. They basically want tourists and expats to move over there who've got more money. They don't want the Western, uh, you know, your typical Western guy from the UK or America coming over with his state pension and living there. They would rather have much wealthier people coming over on the basis they'll spend more, etc, etc. And they have been pushing those initiatives, or trying to push them, very unsuccessfully for the last, at least the last five years. Before COVID and after COVID, they've got that elite programme visa over there they've been trying to push. Doesn't work. Never gets much take up. Um, but the point is, that's what they would like to achieve. If they could achieve it, whether they'll ever be able to achieve it, I've got no idea. Based on their track record, probably not. But that is the goal, that's what they're trying to achieve. So, you've got to bear in mind the way I look at it. Don't plan to be there forever, because you can't guarantee it. Um, if you get married in any of these countries, that might cement your position a bit more. Because although you might not get a vote, your wife will get a vote, and they don't want to upset, you know, necessarily, um, you know, uh, Filipino or Thai nationals who are married to expats, but they might not care. You know, at the end of the day, politicians do what win elections. If there's a huge anti-feeling against expats or immigrants from any country, there'll always be a load of politicians who will ride that, you know, uh, train to the station, and kick everyone out. I mean, we've seen it throughout history. So, um, I found it hard the last few years to think, where will I finish my days? You know, I think I would like to go back to Thailand. But, maybe I won't be able to go back to Thailand. Now, I've gone a bit round in circles here, like I always do in my videos, but the major point as well of making this, and I can't believe I've waited this bloody long to say it, it's the new tax laws in, in Thailand. Now, typical Thai... Uh, 
the way they do it in Thailand. They will make an announcement. They will scare the shit out of people. They will float an idea. Um, and uh, that idea will either come to fruition or it won't. They're very good at backtracking. You know, uh, they'll just say, well, this department said that, and the other department said that, and things don't ever come in. But what I'm talking about now is this new tax um, laws that they've been talking about bringing in for a couple of years now, which are looking more and more like they're going to be a real thing. But as best I understand it, I watch Tim Newton a lot. He's got a channel in Thailand. He's very good. Um, no one still knows what they're going to be. And they may backtrack more. And please, if you're going to put something in the comments about it, it's going to be this percentage and that percentage and that, with the greatest respect, I don't think you know. I don't think anyone knows. Um, someone a few months ago in the comments said it's only going to be taxed on X percentage of your income. Well, they've not even announced that yet, mate. And I've read a couple of things since that it's not going to be that. The point is, they are considering changing the tax laws or are planning to that you would have to pay tax on income owned outside of Thailand if you have been there for more than 180 days in a year. Um, the big debate seems to be how much tax you will pay and whether you will pay tax if you pay tax in another country, i.e. if you have paid tax in the UK on your earnings, will they then hit you again for tax in Thailand? And if they are going to do, what percentage will they tax you on and what will the thresholds be, etc, etc. But the point is, if they do that, that will be a deal breaker for a lot of people in the worst case scenario. And I'm not saying it will be the worst case scenario. What I think is interesting is the six month bit, the six month threshold. Because I was looking at moving to Colombia not so long ago before I became to the Philippines. And one of the attractions of going to Colombia was from the UK, I could go there and stay for six months, just arrive in the country and that was it. Now, I don't know if you got a visa on arrival for six months or it was you were visa free, but the point is you would go there for six months, didn't need a visa. I think I've got that right. It's been a while since I've looked into it. If I've got it wrong, tell me. But there's a nice little matchup in there. Six months in Thailand, six months in Colombia. Now at the moment, I can stay, theoretically, in the Philippines for 36 months. But that could change next week. Since I've been here, in the nine months I've been here, there was a six month visa when I arrived, then the six month visa had been banned, but then I got a six month visa. When I go to the visa office this week, I'm gonna try and get another six month visa. I don't know if the six month visa is still a thing or not. But what that tells me is, whether it's a thing or not, the fact that it keeps becoming debatable whether it is or not, the Filipino government is clearly looking and thinking, what does it want to do with expats? Are there too many? Are there not enough? Um, and I don't think they've come to any conclusions yet. I mean, that's the funny thing about Thailand. Because I say I keep the best, I watch some of the Thai news and that. You know, I'm always interested in what's going on over there. They're saying they want to bring up, you know, the amount of uh, the wealth and these higher class tourists and these higher class or higher earning, uh, you know, expats there. But then they bring in a tax law and they want to tax them more. But at the same time, they've extended tourist and arrival visas from 30 to 60 days because they want to encourage more tourists because um, the tourist figures are, are dropping. There's no plan to it. You know, it's like, it, it, it's crazy to watch. It's, it's just the way that country works. Love it or hate it, it's just the way it is. There is no, um, one piece of legislation will contradict another piece of legislation, you know, there you are. So anyway, in a very roundabout way, what I'm saying is, the way I am now looking at expat life, a lot of people say to me, when will you go back to Thailand? Um, are you happy yet? Are you not? You know, in the comments and that, you know. I'm starting to think the way forward, and it's not an original thought. I mean, I watch a channel called James Abroad, and I like James Abroad. If you're in Thailand and you want to see property and see his life, he's up in, uh, where is he? I think he's up in Tak, um, up in the north. Um, great channel. He's been in Thailand, I, know, I think 20 years, something like that. He did a video a few weeks ago saying that he's thinking of knocking it on the head and 
spending six months in Portugal and six months in Thailand. And I thought that was clickbait to start off with, which surprised me because James is not a clickbait kind of guy. I might put a link in the channel, he's got a great channel. Um, well, I will put a link in the channel. But I thought, that's strange. But I flicked on the channel, because he always seems so happy there. Very honest guy, honest about his life experiences, same as I think I am. Um, but no, he's a new tax loss. You know, he's looked in and thought, you know, and Thailand's getting him down a bit. And so maybe the way forward for him is to spend six months in Portugal and six months in uh, Thailand. Totally get the Portugal bit. I've never actually been to Portugal, but in Europe it's one of the cheapest places to live. Um, and it's supposed to be a good place for expats. So anyway, I've gone right around the bush here. Um, what I'm getting at is, I think a lot of people might have to change this idea. Seems to be a set thing in a lot of uh, people's minds that they're going to go to, like you know, the Philippines or they're going to go to Thailand or whatever. They build a house, they're happily married, and they're going to stay there. Um, I'm not so sure you can be confident of that anymore. Again, I'm going off track. It's like state pensions in your countries and things. People keep saying to me you won't get a state pension. Well, I hope I do, but. I'm not naive enough not to plan for those, you know what I'm saying? You don't really know the way the world is changing, the way people are getting older, the way... We've never had a situation in, as far as I'm aware, where people have been leaving places like Europe, you know, and coming to places like the Philippines and coming to places like Thailand and that. Economic migrants, you call them, in the sense that their state pensions are not enough for them to live comfortably in their home countries so they're going for cheaper living in Asia. You know, it's a relatively new phenomenon. You know, we've only had jet set plane travel the last 20, not 20, but you know what I mean, 30, 40 years. Um, so it's all new. And I think, same as people are saying, you might worry about your pension when you get older in your home country, because there's not enough of the younger generation to pay in to get your pension. You gotta seriously start the thing. How many of us are these countries going to tolerate on a permanent basis? And if you start thinking that way, you should probably start making plans. And it's like I said at the start of the video. I hope I said it on this video. I've done a few retakes. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I accept these things as, um, they're not problems, they're challenges. And if you embrace them, is it that bad? Because I've got to change my way of thinking. It's like, I'm thinking like, do I want to stay in Thailand? Or do I want to stay in the Philippines? Well, why are they mutually exclusive? Why can't I do both? If they're going to change the laws to six months, why don't I have a six month spell in Thailand and a six month spell in the, the Philippines? And build around that you anymore really you might get a slightly different deal on a six month rental than you will for an annual rental you know you might buy a place in Thailand or somewhere not for me like an apartment whether you're renting an apartment here move between the two if that's going to be your plan they may cut it down a bit um, well why not have a few months in Colombia the point is for me the way I am now now don't get me wrong the dogs are off now I'm still quite healthy, well I hope I'm healthy. What I'm saying is I might not think this way while I'm 80. In my mind I might want to settle down and live in one place, but maybe that's when I end up going back to the UK. I don't want to go back to the UK. Um, I'm just saying maybe a nomadic life for expats is the way forward. Maybe that's what it is. Or maybe I'll just start taking life a bit more seriously, work really hard, get a couple of businesses started again, make enough money that I'll be in the top 1% and I won't have to uh, worry about these things. Nah, I don't think I'll do that. <laughs> I think I think I will embrace the lazy, lazy lifestyle that I'm doing now. And I just won't make any definite plans. Would it really be that bad to split your time between uh, three or four nice, friendly, welcoming countries. I don't think it would. I think it's probably quite a nice idea. Um, we'd make the decision-making a bit easier. 
you know, if I suddenly if I can't stay in the Philippines more than six months and I have to get out, then uh, I don't have to come up with an excuse why I'm going back to Thailand, do I? You know what I mean? But um, yeah, anyway, I've gone round and round. I have had a bit of a uh, couple of uh, rum and cokes tonight, so uh, if that has clouded my uh, performance, I do apologise. But I'm over 21. I'm an adult. I'm not hurting anybody. Um, and that's what I'm talking about in this video. Not not hurting anybody. I'm just saying, you know, I think we have to uh, change our views on our futures. Or it would be prudent to give consideration to changing your views on your futures. Um, and I don't think a nomadic life would be that bad necessarily. Particularly if you could take your spouse or your girlfriend with you. Anyway, I've gone on too long. I'm going to uh, end it now. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Quite quiet. It's not really too noisy, is it? People keep saying, I don't believe it's as quiet as you say it is there. Well, we're approaching uh, near 20 past one now. No roosters, no dogs, no chickens, no uh, cats. Lovely. No music, no karaoke. Anyway, I have gone on too long. If you like the video, smash the like button. If you haven't subscribed, it'd be fantastic if you did. Whether you do, whether you don't, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, stay safe, be lucky.